So now Trump, one of the great opportunities he's being presented with and where he is, uh, where his constituency apparently feels he's delivered is in the form of uh, 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 court appointments, particularly the Supreme Court, uh, but also the lower courts. But the context of history, and what I'm thinking of now is particularly your wonderful book on Justice Blackmun, that justices evolve. So could you comment on what you, you know, what you think about Trump's opportunities and how you think uh, whether you think he can depend on these uh, people that he's appointed to evolve, yeah, so to so, speak? No, that's an interesting question. So there's actually been a fair amount of academic research on uh, what the political scientists would call not evolution, but uh, preference change uh, over the trajectory of, um, of a Supreme Court justice's career. And so um, there's one uh, kind of well-known article by um, Professor Michael Dorff from Columbia Law School. Uh, he looked at Republican-appointed justices from uh, the <coughs> mid-20th century, uh, you know, from the Warren Court. Um, and this article came out maybe five or six years ago, so it was mostly Republican appointees. Those who shifted left and those who did not, and what do those two groups have in common? And the commonalities were really interesting. The ones who shifted left all came from, like Harry Blackman, <clears throat> way outside the Beltway, uh, not, didn't have any ties in D.C., moved in midlife to Washington, D.C., to take up this amazing position as a member of the U.S. Supreme Court, kind of shakes you up, you know, kind of makes you question your priors, and you don't have a network that you're necessarily falling into. Uh, the ones who didn't change, were um, the creatures of the Beltway, had uh, paid their dues in the executive branch or whatever. And uh, let's take uh, Chief Justice Roberts. When he moved from the DC Circuit to, I mean, this is, he's outside the frame of Michael Dorff's article, but just look at him. Uh, moved from the DC Circuit to the Supreme Court. His commute grew by about five blocks. That's it. <laughs> You know, and he stepped, he's got a big network in Washington. The likelihood that John Roberts, well, I want to modify that a little because there's a lot of interesting stuff going on at the court, but, but he's not going to wake up someday and find himself a Harry Blackman. Actually, I'll segue into a, a funny story about John Roberts, if I may. Um, he went, uh, and I hear this uh, third hand, but it's very reliable. Um, went up, he was giving a talk in New Hampshire, and so he went to pay a call on uh, the retired Justice David Souter, who lives in Concord, New Hampshire, and uh, they were talking. And, um, and uh, Justice Souter made some comment about the flack that Chief Justice Roberts had taken for his vote in the health care case, in the first of the Obamacare cases. And, uh, and Roberts said, Oh, it's been terrible. He said, do you know what they call me? The names they're calling me? And Justice Souter said, well, I can imagine. No, do you know what they're calling me? Do you understand what they're calling me? He said, well, OK, tell me. What are they calling you? They're calling me Souter. <laughs> <laughs> so David Souter is an example of somebody who came without any Washington ties whatsoever from New Hampshire. Um, you know, and did he move left? I mean, yes, as the court moved right. So um, it's interesting. Will he, is Neil Gorsuch going to change? I mean, yes, he happened to come from Colorado, from the Tenth Circuit, but he's a creature of Washington. He grew up in Washington. He practiced law in Washington. Is he going to change? No, because he goes to the Federalist Society annual convention this summer and basically says, I'm your man. Thank you for your prayers. This is an exact quote. This is an exact quote. Not, not the I'm your man, but thank you for your prayers. So no, no, he's not going to change. And the Trump judges are being very carefully vetted. Well, some of them should have been vetted a little more before they you know, had to pull out. But ideologically, very carefully vetted and served up by the Federalist Society and the Heritage Foundation. It's all been outsourced. And uh, you know, there's not going to be any ideological mistakes.